the microphone wasn't plugged in all the way, so I had to uh, connect it back. But uh, as you guys can see, I'm back in my favorite spot where I make videos. I haven't made a video here in almost a year, man. Like, I used to love coming here. It's away from the city, away from everything else. And um, yeah, it just feels good to be back. I just wanted to say that, man. But this one's going to be about uh, when you start to see the demons start moving and walking into your friends and family. And they start to, the demons start to use them to attack you, man. This is going to be a real video. Uh, Y'all know when I go live, I always say it's going to be a short video, but I'm not saying that no more because every time I say it, it's going to be like an hour, two hour long video. Um, well, hour is not bad, but um, yeah, man. Let's greet the people though. What's up, Yo, Yo, P Joe Pierre? What's up, Shane? What's up, The Different? Happy Sabbath to you too, guys. Hope you guys had a uh, blessed Sabbath day. What's up, Rocky? What's up, Jonas? What up, man? Get the likes up. Yeah, get the likes up. What's up, uh, Mor Mornero? What up? What's up? What up? What up? Mark, the best of the most high. Yes, sir. Thank you, bro. Appreciate the love. What's up, Stephanie? What's up, Jordan? What's up, Kayla? What up, Fear the Lord? What's up, Eve? What's up, Brittany? Happy Sabbath to you, too. We back outside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. I, I love coming out here, man. Loki kind of miss living here, but, you know, you got to just grow, you know, move on. But anyways, let's start the video, man. And uh, this has just happened to me, you know, recently. And I know a lot of you guys can relate to this, man. Especially for those who have been freed. Uh, you've been freed from the demonic strongholds. You've been freed from the unclean spirits. You've broken free from the matrix, from Satan's kingdom. And, and you went through hell to, 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 get free, to break free from it. You went through so much spiritual warfare. You went through so much um, just the craziness going on in your life to get to that point. And then you're free from it, right? You're free and you feel at peace. And then you start to deal with your friends and family and your loved ones who are battling those spirits still, who haven't been delivered. And you know, you're the only light in most, all you chosen ones, you're the only light in this world, okay? You gotta think about how dark this world is, okay? If it wasn't for us chosen ones, this world would be in complete darkness. But because of us chosen ones who are scattered abroad in all four, four corners of the earth, okay? You know, we're the little bit of light left in this earth. And a lot of people, you know, like I, like I tell you guys, the moth, they attract the light, okay? So you're gonna have these people who are just drained, who's, who's operating in low frequency, they're gonna come in your, in, in your life just to just steal what you got, steal your light, to steal your glow. This is what they're trying to do, man, to leech off of your energy, to leech off of your spirit. But it's like, bro, I work so hard to get the Holy Spirit, you know? And not just, you know, obviously the Holy Spirit is a free gift, but to be obedient, you know, to not want, not have the Holy Spirit forsake me, just like what it did to Saul, when the Holy Spirit departed from Saul, an evil spirit from the Lord came to Saul to torment him. You know, we don't want to deal through that, so we're obedient. We're, you know, even though we fall short, but we're trying our best we can to walk this straight and narrow path, the road that not many people take. Okay, we're trying so hard, man. And it's like, you know, these people come in our life, and, you know, us being chosen, we're, we're, we have, we're, we're empaths, right? So we, we, we have compassion for others. We understand that, no, you know, no one's perfect. We understand that we all fall short. And we understand that we need people, you know, at certain times, certain seasons in their life to help us, to help us grow. Um, you know, there's even a Bible verse that says that there's, there's a friend that's closer than their brother. So we need that. We need a brother. We need a sister. We need a friend, you know, to, in, in times of need, you know. And, but what these people don't understand is that you, like, they didn't see when, when you got the Holy Spirit, when you, when you were delivered from your demons or when you were fighting those demons off. You know, when God convicted you, when God showed you the light, when God showed you the truth and you started to read your Bible and the Holy Spirit was speaking through you. Okay. The Holy Spirit is letting you know, like, okay, you got to give up this sin. Okay. Uh, you got to give up that friend. Okay. And God's always giving us the signs. You know, he's always giving us the signs to, to get, to leave things up, you know, always. He, he always is. And the thing is, people don't take heed to the signs. People don't, they don't, they don't follow it, you know, and in all that chaos and all that miss, a lot of people kind of just, they ignored the signs and then now you reap what you sowed, okay? You, you ignored what God was showing you and now, and now you reap what you sowed. And that's corruption because if the Holy Spirit is telling you to do something and you're, and you're resisting that, the Holy Spirit must be warning you because it's out of love. It's out of, you know, telling you, you know, the things that are gonna come to, to avoid, you know, the chaos that might come or the destruction that might come your way and you ignore it, you reject it. You know, what do you expect is gonna happen, man? You know, and, you know, so as I was saying, though, they don't see the hell you had to go through to break free from those demons. OK, they don't they don't see what you had to go through and they just want to come your way 
you know, with all the demons that they have, you know, and now if they're trying to fight the demons off, they're trying to, you know, seek deliverance and stuff like that, then that's cool. They try to pray, walk in the spirit. That's cool, 100%. I'm not saying, you know, like, obviously, you got to use your discernment to see and use wisdom. Uh, and also, too, guys, there's going to be so many helicopters here. That's what I hate about this spot. Helicopters, uh, airplanes, like, every 10 minutes. So just bear with it, okay? Um, so, like, for those who are delivered, for, I, I, can't, I can't speak for everybody else, but for my testimony, like, I went through hell, like, when I was getting free from those demons, when I was leaving the Matrix. Remember, when I told you guys the Matrix, someone said, this is new. Yes, you're watching, this is a live stream. You're watching this live, okay? Um, but what, what, uh, when you're leaving the Matrix, and like I always tell you guys, I'm the first one to ever say this, too. The Matrix is Satan's kingdom. I'm the, everyone talks about the Matrix and that, and I've been talking about the Matrix since 2018, before any of these guys came on here to talk about the Matrix, okay? So the Matrix is Satan's kingdom. The minute, the minute you leave the kingdom of darkness, okay? It's like Satan's like, oh, heck no. It's, it's like something gets triggered in the spiritual realm. I'm telling you, bro, something gets triggered in the spiritual realm where, you know, it's like, oh, no, he's leaving. Let's attack him. You know, let's send the Agent Smith. Let's send the demons. Let's send, let's send uh, the old friends, uh, uh, the ex-girlfriend, the ex-boyfriend. Let, let, let's send it, send it his way. Let's, let's get him to go back. Let's get him to go back asleep. And that's exactly what happens, man. And a lot of people, they're, not, they're unaware of Satan's schemes, okay? You got to understand, man. People don't, they don't, they think that things are just a, a coincidence. They think that things are just happening just to happen. No, man. Whenever you're giving up your sins, it's like something gets triggered, especially if you're still in the matrix, okay? Especially if you're, now if you're not in the matrix, you fell short and you're on fire for God, you know, because, you know, we, we all do, right? Then that's different. But if you're still in bondage to Satan's kingdom, okay? And you, and you should, uh, well, I'm not going to say you should know because not everyone knows. Not everyone knows. This is real spiritual insight right here. Not everyone knows about that, right? But I'm letting you guys know, okay? If you're still in Satan's kingdom, you're still of this world, uh, you're still partaking of the world. Remember, the Bible says that a friend of the world is the enemy of God, okay? You are God's enemy when you partake in, you know, being, being of this world, okay? Even the Bible makes it clear that the love of God doesn't dwell within you, okay? That, that, that's the truth. Someone says, I can't help but repent when I fall short. No, we have to, and, that, and that's a good thing, right? Because there's people who fall short. There's people who are just just spiritually dead and they don't feel the need to repent you know so that's actually a good thing that you said that man that's actually a good thing so yeah don't don't like we don't want to get too down on ourselves when we fall short like understand hey you know that we got it now uh, let me make this very clear you reap what you sow in life okay yes we could repent but like say for instance right uh let's say you um you're in a car chase right you're in a car chase and the cops are chasing you whatever you whatever you did Okay? You're in a car chase. You could repent, get down on your knees, God forgive me, but you got to reap what you sow. You got to face time in jail. You know, you still got to reap the consequences of that. And that's the same thing we have to think about when it comes to sin. Okay? Of course, God could forgive us. Okay? Now, I know there's, you know, the, 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 sin, the unforgivable sin, which is um, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. But all the other sins, right? You could be forgiven, but there's still consequences to it. Okay? You could defile yourself you know, for, for life by doing, you know, by living a certain lifestyle, by, you know, living in willful sin. You can't. So always think twice, guys, before you do certain things and, you know, think about the consequences. Think about it, guys. A lot of us, I'm not going to say everybody because some people, they like going to jail. But you know, when it comes to jail and prison, we're going to think twice before we, before we steal or before we kill because we know the consequences that come with that. We have to have that same mind when it comes to sin because there's always consequences that we have to deal with. Okay? There's always consequences that we have to deal with. And, you know, what the friends and family don't realize is that you went through so much to be free and then they want to come your way with all the baggage, with all the spirits, with all the soul ties, with all the demons. They want to come all, all, all your way with that. And see, one thing about what people who have demons, a lot of people, okay, they don't even know that they have demonic spirits in them. They don't even know that the, the demonic spirits are using that vessel to attack you. See, you see, you see what's funny, right? You broke free from the matrix. You broke free from Satan's kingdom. You went through hell and back to, to escape, okay? You escaped. You had Jesus in your life. Uh, you took heed to the truth. Uh, you started keeping God's commandments, which is a light. Remember, the Bible says the commandment is a light into your path, a light into your feet, okay? So you're keeping God's commandments. Uh, you're being set apart, most importantly. You know, that, that's definitely most important. You know, you're being set apart, which means being holy, okay? Uh, you're not serving your flesh. And, you know, through all that, you were able to escape, okay? You are able to escape. And now these people want to come your way with the demons, because understand this, 
when you broke free from the demons and you're not opening those doors for the demons to come in, because the Bible says if you go back to your old ways, okay, that there's seven spirits that come back and they're more wicked than they were the first time. Okay, I believe that's in Matthew chapter 12, uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45. Okay, so if you go back to your old ways, you know, the old lifestyle that you used to live in, and you, and you try to, you know, you, you know, you're, you're in that lifestyle for a certain amount of time, and you find no need to repent, no, no shame, no guilt. There's going to be seven spirits. And guys, that should put the fear of God in you. When you guys read the Bible, it should put the fear of God in you to like, dang, I don't want to do that no more because I don't want those seven spirits or seven demons. And they're going to be worse than they were the first time. That's scary, bro. That's the fear of God. That, you should have that in you. And I remember when I first left uh, Saints Kingdom, I remember that, that, that God put that Bible verse in my heart, bro. And I was like, bro, I'm not going back to my old ways, bro. Because like I had to go through so much. I'm telling you guys, so much. And looking back, it's like, I think that the reason why I went through so much, I went through literally hell is because God was preparing me to be a warrior, bro. He was preparing me to be a warrior in his army. So I had to be, I had to go through it. I had to be strong. And I was alone. And sometimes, guys, you got to be alone because that brings strength. Okay, that brings character. And as I was in my isolation period, now you're not going to be isolated forever. Okay, but as I was in my isolation period, I found myself learning more about God, learning more about what he wants to do in my life. And I started learning more about how corrupt and deceitful this world is and how how corrupt, you know, our bodies is because our bodies is always wanting to gravitate towards what's wrong. And our spirit is always trying to gravitate towards what's right. And I didn't know anything about that until I actually started to read the Bible. This is why the Bible says that you have to study to show yourself approved. You can't rely on a church. And this is what I was doing back then. I would rely on my pastor on the Sunday service, which the pastor wasn't really saying much. You know, and that's not, you can't blame the pastor. You gotta blame yourself because as men, okay, as men of God, you know, or even as a woman of God, you're supposed to read and, and, and you know, do, do the work yourself. You shouldn't rely on someone else. Not saying that you can't, you know, go to church or, you know, watch a video or something like that. I'm not saying that. But, you know, if you're not putting in the work yourself, you can't be surprised why you're not spiritually growing. Okay? And that's also a part of the matrix system, too. Go to church on Sundays, but Monday through Saturday, live like the world. But on Sunday, you know, holiness, amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. That's fake, bro. The most I ain't dealing with people like that. We got to start, start being real and holding ourselves accountable. Okay, we can't, we can't blame people no more. We have to blame ourselves. Okay, when y'all falling short, people hit me up all the time. Mark, my ex-girlfriend, my ex-boyfriend did this. Blame yourself, bro. Don't blame them. And this is how you're going to grow. And also, this is how you're going to grow spiritually. You know, the reason why people are not growing spiritually, this is one thing I'm noticing because I'm a seer so I can see things. I'm like, wait, people have been a Christian for five, ten years, two years, three years, but they're the same they were a year ago, two years. I don't see no change. It's because there's no, no spiritual growth because they still love this world. That's the reason, guys. And I know y'all going to hate the messenger because that's what people do. They attack and hate and shoot the messenger. That's what y'all do. The reason why you're not spiritually growing is because you still have the love of the world in you. Still, you're still just, you know, looking for attention, looking for validation for people who don't even care about you. People who do not care about you. So people keep saying this video is, this is, this is a live video, guys. This is live. <laughs> Hello, it's live. <laughs> it's live. It's live. I know you guys are not used to the background because I don't come here no more. I don't live in the city no more. So that's why, I, I know this is my old video that I used to make this. No, this is live, guys. This is, this is live. Okay, someone said, that's heavy. The same people from 10 years. Oh, yeah, no. I know a lot of people who've been going to church 10, 20 years. They're the same person, just religious, you know? No spiritual growth, okay? Um, no fruit. So, to, you know, 20 years, guys? Now, God, you know, now who knows? Because 20 years, we, Christ might come back and burn the wicked, burn the ungodly, burn the sinners, you know, uh, burn the disobedient. So I, I'm not sure if we're going to be here. No one knows the day or hour, but let's say 20 years from now and I'm still walking with God. God, you know, I hope, you know, hope God has grace and mercy upon my life, you know, and I, and I, and I desire to, to do the will of God. I desire to be in the position where God has put me in, you know, but let's say 20 years, guys, I'm going to be, man, I'm going to be touched. I'm going to be healing the sick. I'm going to be laying my hands on the sick and casting demons out in 20 years. I'm going to be in that level spiritually, bro. And that's what we have to, desire. that's a high, to me, that's the highest level we could reach. When it comes to in spirituality, when it comes to, you know, having the Holy Spirit and doing the work of God, like literally when you can lay your hands on the sick, when you can lay your hands on someone who's, who's going through bondage and you can cast the demon out. That's what I want to be. At. That's the level I want to be on, man. Now, I'm not there yet. You know, I'm not there yet, but, you know, we should all strive to get on that level, man, especially as a man of God. Because if we have the authority, a lot of people are scared of demons. They're scared of like, you know, because that's what Hollywood programs us, you know. The red horns and the red suit and the ah, oh, you know. But that, bro, those are little chickens, man. They, they ain't nothing, man. Like, we, we got, they got, and they fear us. When you have the Holy Spirit, demons are actually afraid of you. I noticed this, guys. I noticed that 
Oh, this will, be, this will be a real video, man. I'm gonna read the super chats in a bit, guys. I'm gonna read it a bit, but hold up. So I remember, and some of you guys can relate to this, right? So back when I was living in sin, right? And now, guys, I'm talking not just, not just like, you know, not just struggling. I'm talking about just deep in it, bro, like straight up deep in it. I didn't have God in my life. Most, you know, I didn't have God in my life. When you don't have God in your life, you have the devil, okay? That's just the truth. You can't, people, people think that you could be like um, in between, like you could have God and you could live with the world. No, guys. You either have God or you have the devil. As simple as that. And I know a lot of y'all don't like to hear this, but it's just the truth. Okay, so um, like I said, I was disobedient, rebellious. Man, I was full of sin, man. Just completely separated from God at the time. This is years ago. And uh, I'd be in my room, right? I'd be in my room watching TV and I'd be ready to go to sleep. Look at this bug, man. I'd be ready to go to sleep, right? And I couldn't go to sleep at night, man. I couldn't go to sleep at night and... Like, I, I would feel there was something in the room, bro. Some of, some of y'all could relate. I remember people, I remember my mom tell my mom this. She's like, oh, are you okay? Like, dang, man, no one could relate to what I'm going through. But I would hear stuff, bro. I would hear, I know what I was hearing. And I was hearing demons, man. I was hearing evil spirits and they were tormenting me. The spirit of fear is real, is real, man. Okay, I didn't have the spirit of love, the spirit of sound mind, you know, the spirit of the power. I didn't have that. I had the spirit of fear in me. And when I was living in that willful sin, those demons were tormenting me, man. And that's judgment. Okay, the Most High allows them. A lot of people don't like to hear this, but it's the truth. God created the light and he created the dark. Okay, yes, God created the light and he created the dark. And best believe, guys, that, you know, these evil spirits, they're, they're, that's, judgment, that's judge, uh, God's judgment on your sins. Okay, and you, you opening doors for them because the devil wants to destroy you. Okay, he wants to, he, that's his whole goal, his whole mission, to steal, kill, and destroy so always keep that in mind. And that was, what was, that was what's happening, guys. That was what's happening. And, you know, I was living in sin, so God allowed the... And I, guys, I couldn't sleep at night. I had, to, I, had to put the t I had to leave the TV on. I had to leave the lights on my, in my room, bro. Like, it's real, man. Like, this is real. And I remember that. And now that doesn't happen no more because I'm not opening no demonic doors. I'm not opening doors for them to come in, the spirit of fear to come in. Because when you live in willful sin... I mean, even if you fall short, guys, and now, of course, we all do, but still, like I said, guys, you got to reap what you sow. It's just the truth. You know, I hate it has to be this way, but this is how this, this, is how this world is, man, you know? Uh, that's why we have to do our best, guys, to deny ourselves daily, man, and uh, stay, uh, surround yourself around people who are going to encourage you, who are going to, you know, help you, build you up, and, you know, you know, I know it's hard to find people like that. It's really hard to find people who are, like, on self-improvement or, like, or who just on this on the spiritual journey, you know, who, who sees the world for what it is. A lot of it's really hard, man. And uh, I feel like a lot of people are just programmed just to be religious. You know, they're not really seeing what's really going, what's taking place in the spiritual realm, man. Thank you so much. I see a lot of sisters showing love. Thank you for say, saying hit the like button. Yes, thank you so much. I'm gonna read the super chats. I'm, I'm gonna finish what I'm saying too, but I want to make sure I read this real quick. Now, okay, thank you so much, Cindy, for the super chat. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. And. Uh, Thank you so much. Jordan Washington says, yes, sir, you're, you're cooking as always. I've been going through all this recently. I made the decision to be a warrior walk alone and take my spiritual growth seriously. All praise the most high God. That's what's up, man. All praises, bro. Yeah, we, we, gotta, we gotta be serious, man. And that's another thing too. Like I was saying earlier, people go to church 10, 20 years. People, you know, call themselves a Christian five, 10, two, three years, but there's no real growth. And I'm just like, now, I, I'm not here to compare myself to other people. But I'm, like I said, I'm just, I, it's my testimony. It's just my testimony. You know, me being on my walk, I think it's been five years now. And I'm, I'm not, like, if I look back at the person I was two, three years ago, I'll be like, if I were to see the person I was two, three years ago, I'd be like, who the heck is that? I don't really know who that person is. Like, I'm a complete, I'm transformed, bro. My mind, my spirit, everything. I'm a complete different person. You know, the way I think, the way I act, the way I talk. Like, I'm just a different person, bro. And that's how you're supposed to be. And like, I feel like people are just the same person. They're not really growing. Okay, just being religious. That's what the thing is, you know. And the, and that's that's the matrix deception too. You know, that's a, that's the that's the whole matrix deception. Someone says, how long have you been growing your locks? Um, it's been like six years now. I cut it though. I cut it just recently. Um, but yeah. Anyways, so as I was talking about the friends and family, right? You went through you went through so much to be free. And they just want to come your way and just, and just attack you again. But you can't be mad at them, right? Let me explain this. Let me explain why you can't get mad at them. Because like I said, guys, a lot of people are unaware of what's really taking place. And this is why even Christ says, man, when, because when, remember, when, when they were hanging Christ up, 
He could have he destroyed them all. He could have sent angels to destroy them all, man. But he was like, nah, man. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. So when people are being used by demonic spirits, you know, I don't even get mad at them because I, I understand you know, that was once me too. So I don't want to be a hypocrite because there was a time where they were using me unawarely when I didn't know, when I didn't have the Holy Spirit. You know, someone said they're asleep. Yeah, they're asleep. Just like in the movie, um, uh, They Live. That's a great movie, man. It shows how people are just following politicians. People are just following the government. People are just following the matrix system. And uh, they're unable to see. They're spiritually dead. And we're living around, we're living in a world, guys, where it seems like mo majority of people are spiritually dead, man. They're, they have no insight. And a lot of people are just falling into the snares of Satan, willfully or unwillfully. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are reaping what they're sowing, man. And when you, and you come in, you go into their life, guys, a lot of people call it karma, whatever you want to call it. Okay, the Bible calls it reaping where it's sown. If you go into someone's life who, who did wrong to someone, who stole from someone, who lied to someone, who betrayed someone, you go into their life, what are they going to do to you? Whether they're a friend, a family member, okay? People, when, when you try to save someone who's on a sinking ship, who, who's drowning in the sea of life, okay? When you try to save someone who's drowning, okay? And, you, and you're going to drown there with them because people are reaping what they sowed, man. So certain people, you just got to walk away from them. And this is why, like, even though sometimes guys being isolated for, for certain periods of my life or certain seasons, I guess I could say certain seasons of my life, it it's, it's, brings a lot of suffering, but at the same time, like, it's peace because I don't have to deal with people's demons. I don't have to deal with that, man. And, uh, you know, Matthew chapter five, 6, verse 33, Seek God's kingdom daily as righteousness, and things will be added into you. So I know that the things that I need in this walk, the things I need with God, it's going to be added to me. And I, I know that, that evil communications is going to corrupt my good manners. So I can't always be around certain individuals for too long, even certain family members. And I, and I, love, I love my family, man. Like, I'm not going to say I don't, you know. Uh, but I know that certain, certain times, it's like, you know, I got I to gotta be by myself. Even Christ, even his disciples, bro, even Christ and his disciples, he told them, I'm going to the mountaintop alone. So even he walked alone for a little bit. It's good. You know, sometimes you got to do it for your spirit, man. It's just like to give your spirit like an uh, extra boost, you know, especially the things that we go through in life. You know, I'm pretty sure Christ was battling too, you know. He, he, he had a flesh. He, he was battling too as well. He never gave into it. But, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, whether you're giving into it or not, sometimes you got to just be alone, man. Get into prayer. Get into some fasting. And, uh, you know, isolate yourself for a bit. And every time, guys, every time I'm telling you, bro, I'm telling you, man, every time I was isolated for a bit, the spiritual growth, just on another level, bro. Another level, another level. Not to say you're going you're gonna to level up just being isolated. Obviously, not putting in the work behind the scenes. But that's just one thing I noticed, man. Someone says, how hard is a water fast? It depends. If you've been fasting for a while, it's easy. That stuff is easy. But if you're, like, new to it, then it could get hard. Yeah, then it could definitely get hard, man. But, um... Yeah, definitely, definitely do some fasting, man. One thing I noticed that every time I fell short, guys, every single time, and I would do some fasting, like, I would feel ashamed, bro. I would be like, why did I even fall short? Because it, cause when you fast, your spirit is, like, so strong. It's so elevated. It's like, what the heck? I was on some peasant stuff, man. Like, like really, bro, really. And I'd be thinking that, too. Like, last time when I fell short two months ago, I started getting some heavy fasting. I want to say maybe, like, day three. I was like... Why the heck did I even do that, bro? Like, you know, like I was like, what the heck? That's so that's so foolish of me. And uh, you know, in life we learn from our mistakes. Some people they don't learn from the mistakes. I mean, some people they just just love to be a fool, you know, love to be a fool and stuff. But now, when you love God, guys, when you, when you seek to please Him, you are willing to um, do what you gotta do, man. Do what you gotta do to get to the next level. Do what you gotta do to please Him, to seek Him. And you're going to let nothing get in your way, man. You're going to get absolutely nothing. No matter people who try to gaslight, people who try to manipulate, people who try to play games, play the mind games. Nah, man, you're not getting, you're not getting in my way because I'm walking with God. You know, if, I have to, if that means I have to walk alone, then so be it. Because the way, the, the path of the narrow, only few find. So I understand that there's only going to be a few people going to heaven. Okay, that's what the Bible says. A lot of people don't like to hear that, but that's just the truth. You know, I Google something. I said, how many, how many people are in the, in the religion of Christianity, right? There's like, I think like 2 billion. And like Muslims, there's like, I think like, I think it's like 2 billion too. Or I don't know, I, I forgot. But I know Christianity has like, it's like 2 billion, right? And it's just like, the, Jesus says that the way is narrow, only few find it. So you mean, you mean to tell me that all those 2 billion people who profess Christianity, right? You think that all, the, all of them are going to heavy, heaven? I mean, sorry. All, you think that all of them are going to heaven? It's not the truth, man. 
Some people are gonna choose Satan. Some people are gonna choose the world. Some people are gonna be like Lot's wife. Okay. Some people are gonna be like Judas, the betrayer. And that's, that spirit, that Judas spirit, that serpent seed spirit. It's like, I see it's, it's more, it's so much of them out here, man. It's so much. It's so much, man. Thank you so much, Whitney, for the super chat. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, sis. Uh, the Narrow Pass says, he says, go your show, show some love for you, big dog. Ever since I came across your IG profile in 2018, changed my life, man. Work, man, is worthy of me. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you, uh, The Narrow Path. Yeah, yeah, you're one of my first followers. It's crazy, because before I got on YouTube, I was on Instagram. And I would make he YouTube videos here and there, but I should have I I started making YouTube videos back then, because that's more of an audience reach, you know? Like Instagram, I don't like, I don't like using Instagram. I still have it. I still use it. I still post here and, here and there, but YouTube is way better, man. You can connect with more people more, and you can see people's face. And I don't know. I just I, I, I like YouTube more. But I appreciate you, man. I remember you've been rocking me for a long time, man. I'm going to make you a... Hey, type, type, some, type, type something real quick. I'm going to make you a mod. I'm going to make you a mod, bro. Someone says, uh, Mark, before your vids, I was, I was in the world sinning and felt like I was just going through every day. But after I found you, I felt better and changed my life around. Keep, doing the, keep up the great work. Thank you, bro. Wow, man. Hey, as I'm telling you guys, I have a video I'm uploading tomorrow, too, on this channel, on Mark the Messenger Podcast. And that's going to relate to what you just said, man. But I appreciate you. These words, guys, y'all don't even understand. The Bible even says that kind, kind words is like a medicine. So that you could heal someone with your words. You could destroy someone. You could push someone away. You could just destroy someone with your words. But you also could heal someone with your words. When people, when people say that type of message, man, that, like, motivates me. Man, like, real, for real. When people are like, oh, Mark, because of you. Now, of course, it's not to boast of myself. It's all just God using me. But when I see that, it inspires me to go hard because it's like there's so many lost souls out there. There's so many people who, who, who want Christ, who need the truth, but they don't have, they, they, you know, they haven't been, you know, came into the cross these videos. They haven't came across the truth, you know. So we have to be, you know, the Bible says, uh, there's many, there's the, the harvest is many, but the laborers are few. There's only few people who are actually doing the work and, you know, doing the best we can. Cause it's not easy, man. It's a lot of spiritual warfare that we have to go through to make these videos, you know, especially when I'm on the devil's neck. Oh, the devil, he tries to attack. He tries, he tries, he tries. But guess what? I fight back and I fight back. Cause I, I ain't giving up. I've been, I've been on this path for too long. Five years. I'm not looking back, bro. Like leave me alone, devil. Go mess with them. The people who are willfully sinning, go mess with them. bro. <laughs> like, I mean, the, Hey, you open the door, you know, you open the door. Someone says, is it okay for a Christian to smoke weed? I have many videos in that, but no, the Bible says to be, um, to be a sober minded. So you don't want to be getting high, man. I, I have like five videos on that. Uh, the moon man. Thank you so much. He says that ticks me off. Why can't they just admit they ain't Christian? Literally. Nobody is forcing them. If they want Satan, nobody is stopping them. You know, I think some people, they, they actually want the truth. They, they actually do, but the church they're at is spiritually dead. There's no truth in these pastors and most of them, so they're not growing. But the thing, like I said in the beginning of this video, they, you have to be accountable. You, have, you can't be blaming a pastor. You can't be blaming no one but yourself. So they're not actually doing the work to seek God for themselves, you know? So that's what I believe it is. Like, you know, a lot of the people are just in these churches, and um, they're not really getting the meat. You know, they're, they're not getting the meat. They're not in um, a conjugation where, you know, it's iron sharpening iron and there's real truth that's being, that's being pushed out. And I feel like the Bible even, Jesus says that if you, if you, um, if you let me keep my commandments, how many people who, who call themselves Christians are keeping God's commandments? You know, there's not many. Okay. There's not many. Thank you so much. Heather T says, hi, Mark. Thanks for your works. You have woken me up. I've been listening to you for nine months and I learned a lot from you. Keep up the great work. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Heather T. I appreciate you too. Thank you so much. Uh, Cindy said, "Very few. Yep, there's not there's not many, man. But like I said, guys, we can't we can't be blaming the pastor. We can't be blaming nobody but ourselves. Okay, we can't be blaming nobody but ourselves, man. Thank you so much, Katos. He says, "Sow into your anointed one, so you can reap spiritually." Thank thank you. I've been blessed through this ministry. All praise the Most High. Thank you so much, Katos. Yeah, the Bible says if you bless uh, in Genesis chapter. Um, I don't have my Bible on me right now, but it says that if, if you bless God's people, he'll bless you. And whoever curses you, God will curse them. If someone wants to leave that Bible verse, go ahead. It's in the, leave it in the comments. That's in the book of Genesis. I don't know the verse by heart. Is it 19, chapter 19, verse 13? I don't know that verse by heart. But thank you so much. But that's true. If you bless God's uh, people, okay, you will be blessed. If you curse God's people, God's going to curse you. That's just, that's just the truth. That's not a quote. That's a Bible verse. Okay, I try to talk to my mother about these topics and the attitude of them, I don't care, left me wanting to not help them anymore. 
the only way who listens to me is my father, they are foolish. Well, the Bible says to forsake the foolish. Okay, it says to forsake the foolish and live. And I could attest to that when I was surrounding myself with a whole bunch of fools. I would become a fool. Okay? I will become, the Bible even says that if you, if you have, keep company of the wise, you'll become wise. But the, the, the keep company of the fools, they will be destroyed. So if, if, I, if, if I'm around a, couple, a bunch of fools, I'm, I'm gone, bro. Peace. I'm out. Because, like I said, guys, our souls and our spirits, we can't blame nobody but ourselves, okay? You know, a lot of people, they always, they always try to blame, you know, my ex-boyfriend, my ex-girlfriend. Blame yourself. Oh, that's the Bible verse right there. Yeah, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. There you go. Yep. I knew that in the back of my head. I knew it. Um, I agree with you. Have to stay away from the narcissist. Yeah, see, a lot of people talk about the narcissist, but no one really talks about what's Who's behind the narcissist? You know, I was one of the first person to say this too. The first narcissist on this earth was Satan. We could, guys, everything in this life, we could all learn from Adam and Eve and, you know, um, and the devil. We could all learn from all of the garden, the garden of Eve. Okay, we could, we could learn a lot from that. So yeah, the first narcissist was Satan. Okay, and, the, and people who are narcissists, they operate under his spirit. Okay, this is all spiritual. Okay, this is why the Bible says a spiritual man judges all things. But he himself is judged of no man. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. So always understand that. Okay? When you're dealing with certain people, guys, you're dealing with the spirits. You ain't dealing with the person. You, you ain't dealing with the individual. That's what they want you to believe. Okay? A lot of people are battling certain spirits, man. And, you know, some, someone said energy. Wait, angry demons. What does that mean, uh, Devin? Angry. I, I never heard of that. Someone says, my ex is a narcissist. He was draining me so much. Yeah, that's what demons do. Demons drain you of your, they drain you of your energy. Uh, but hey, you know, you gotta like, like when I attracted a narcissist, you know, I'm like, you know, I, I've been in relationships with them too, but I, w I was just like them, you know. Now I wasn't like, I wasn't like demonic as they were, but you know, I wasn't, I wasn't living for God, so I attracted those type of people. Okay, the Bible says that a wicked woman is given over to a wicked man, and a, and a godly woman is given to him who fears the Lord. Okay, so. If you're, if you're attracting all these type of people, all these bad people, it's because you're not, you're not good yourself. You're not righteous yourself. So uh, I'm not going to, that's why I told you guys, like, this is one thing that God showed me a while ago too. Don't blame nobody but yourself. Okay, because when it's time for us to get judged, we can't blame nobody. Only going to blame you. Oh, well, God, uh, uh, my friend made me sin, or my mom, my dad made me do not. No. Once you reach a certain age, you blame no one to blame but yourself. So, you know. It's tough out here, guys. It's tough, man. Trust me, I know. But the reward is great. That's what, that's what should keep us on this path, too, because we know that the Bible says that Christ has mansions prepared of us in heaven. Okay? We know that in heaven, we're going to have new uncorruptible bodies. We're not going to be falling to the, the deceitful snares of sin. We're not going to be, we're not going to be, you know, in love, in love with that or even wanting to, wanting to do that. So I'm waiting for that day. I don't know about you guys. But I'm waiting for that day for get that, to get the new bodies, man, because it's just like, it's tough, man. It's tough, especially when you have no real support system. Um, when you're like the out, when you're a chosen one, there's one thing I noticed about people who are chosen ones, right? Like you're like the outcast of your family, the outcast of society. Uh, you never fit in. People always have problems with you for whatever reason. You know, in, in the beginning, it's cool. Like it's, I notice this when you make friends with people, right? In the beginning, it's cool. You know, you're showing love, whatever, blah, blah. You know, everything is going good. But like in the middle, like it kind of like, you know, it's like, what's going on, man? When I wasn't the chosen one, I mean, we always been chosen. But like when I, before I picked up the calling, you know, that never happened to me. But one, the minute I'm chosen now, it's like, you can't really, you can't, you just can't. Certain things you just can't do no more, man. And it's not like the things that you're doing is evil or anything like that. It's just that, you know, God just wants you to himself. It's just, it's just, at least that's what it feels like, man. And you know, I noticed that in the beginning, everything just goes good. And then in the middle, you start to see the spirits. You start to see the fakeness. You start to see the jealousy and envy. It's just like, come on, bro. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to be, I, I'm, just, I'm coming with the spirit of love. They're coming with the spirit of hate, the spirit of envy and jealousy. And I don't have time for that, bro. I'm not dealing with, I'm not trying to deal with these certain spirits. Because like I said, guys, when people come into your life, you're not dealing with the person. You're not dealing with the individual. You're dealing with the demons inside them, man. And, you know, just because someone has demonic spirits, it doesn't make them a bad person. Let me say this too. Um, it doesn't make them like an evil person. Like I said, some people are unaware of it. Okay, some people are unaware of it, man. Thank you so much, uh, Lorna, for the super chat. Uh, that narrow pass says, even around so-called friends, man, always felt like I shouldn't be there. 
Yeah, man. Bro, that's that's real. Here, let me make you a mod real quick. I'll make you a mod, bro. Uh, manage mod director. There you go. Yeah, I, I feel... I feel I, 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 Y'all ever notice this, too? Like, you're around a circle of people, right? Let's say, like, five, ten people. But like, you feel so alone. But when you're by yourself, when you're by yourself, no one's around you. You feel like... You feel like in peace or I don't, I don't know how I don't know how to explain it but it's so true man it's so true and that just lets me know like whenever you whenever you're around a circle of people and you just feel like you don't you don't feel like you don't belong there it's because you don't you don't belong there man and uh not not saying that if you're around you know of course if you're around like-minded people let me add some balance to this if you're around like like-minded people then obviously you're not going to feel that way you know at least I would hope not but when you're around people who you know just ain't really you know, I ain't really trying to live for God or anything like that, or, you know, be on the narrow path. It's like, bro, why am I here, man? Someone says we are set apart. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And to this world, you're just a strange, you're just a strange individual, man. It's very weird, very weird times. You know, it's crazy because, you know, there's even a Bible verse, which it, it really applies heavy into these last days. It says that um, evil is, uh, woe unto them they call evil good and good evil. And I feel like everything is backwards. And remember, Satan, he's the author of confusion. Okay, that's not, God's not the author of confusion, so author of confusion, Satan is. And what th Satan does is he wants to reverse things. So when God says to keep the commandments, Satan wants you to rebel against the commandments. When God says to follow him, follow, uh, follow sorry, follow his son, okay, uh, Satan wants you to follow him. Satan wants you to follow these celebrities who follow Satan, okay? Um, it's just a huge deception. Everything is backwards. You know, God wants a woman to get married at a young age. Satan wants you to destroy your youth, to destroy your 18, 19, and your 20s. And then, you know, and then when you're destroyed, then, you know, now get a husband. You know, so everything is backwards, man. Okay. Um, it's just like, dang. And it's like, you want people to wake up. Like, you just want to shake people, like, wake up. But people are not going to wake up, man. Or a lot of people are not. In these last days, guys, the people who are still asleep with all the, the deception going on, with all the agendas, with all the programming, with all the brainwashing, you would think that people would wake up, but people are still not waking up, man. In the age of information, where social media, where people are on their phones, guys, people are on their phones 10 hours a day, some people even longer, okay? And you're still asleep, you know, because a phone, that's, that's, a, that's a device full of knowledge. Now, of course, you can use your phone to, to watch corn. You can use your phone to subscribe to OnlyFans, to lust after a three or fours, okay? You can use your phone to, uh, to gamble and waste your life away. But even in the midst of that phone, there is a lot of knowledge on the and on certain. Now, of course, you gotta remember it's a portal. TV, cell phones, laptops, all just a portal. What you bring in, what you feed your mind, your spirit. That's why I told you guys I don't watch horror movies no more because I know that, you know, what I'm watching, you know, that could affect my spirit. That could affect my mind. So I don't watch horror movies no more. Okay. Now some people are like, oh, Mark, I wasn't convicted on that. I still watch it. Everything is okay, and that's cool. If you haven't been convicted on it. Like I said, I'm not the, like the, I'm not like those religious people condemning people. I don't care, bro. You live your life, okay? You live your life chasing God's conviction. Me, I'm a, I'm gonna follow God's convictions. That's why I don't I don't I don't watch that type of stuff no more, okay? And I like horror movies. I'm not gonna cap and act like I don't. I love them, but if I know that's gonna affect my spirit, I'm not gonna watch it no more, okay? I'm not gonna watch it no more. So, um, it's all just portals. What you choose to bring in, it's a gateway, okay? Gateway, just like when you watch corn. When you watch corn, you're opening up a gateway in your life. For the, with the, the spirit of lust to attack you, okay? Someone says sin begins with the eyes. Yeah, I, I agree with that. The, the mind, the eyes, yeah, that's true. I agree with that 100%, man. Uh, thank you so much, Tez. He says, Sirach, chapter 27, verse 12. Uh, Super Chat says, when you find yourself with stupid people, look for some excuse to leave. But when you are with serious-minded people, stay as long as you can. I like that. I like that verse a lot. Let me read that again. It says, when you find yourself with stupid people, Look for some excuse to leave. Wow, I did that. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. But when you are with serious-minded people, stay as long as you can. I like that verse a lot, man. When I was with fools, I always found an excuse. I always made an excuse. <laughs> That's some real stuff, bro. That's some real stuff. Someone said 340 people in here and only only 220 likes. You know, it'd be like that, though. You know, I'm not tripping off that, you know. If people who have the love in their heart, all the chosen ones, people who have love for your boy, your brother, okay, your brother in Christ, Hit the like button. Those who are just watching, just to watch and you know, try to find something, you know, something. Like <laughs> you know how some people are, man. It's all good though. The word's gonna be preached regardless if they hit the like button or not. I'll tell you that right now. Who cares? Someone says, "No, but I can't give up the weed. It's hard, but I'm trying." Hey, as long as you're trying, man. For me, 
You know, once I gave myself, once I surrendered to God, things like became easy to give up. But like I said, guys, a lot of people, they, they're not really trying to be all in, man. A lot of people ain't trying to be all in. And sometimes it's good to guys is to, to start fasting, not just from food, but also from your phones, from, you know, from these cell phones and, and um, social media. Sometimes it's good to take a break. I'm not just talking about one day, two days. No, I'm talking about months. I'm talking about months. Sometimes it's good to do that, man. Sometimes it's good to do that. You know, even on Instagram, uh, I, I haven't, and I just started posting there just recently, but prior to that, I wasn't on there for, for a cool minute. You know, so this social media stuff kind of could be a distraction itself too. Now, if you're preaching the word of God, then it's cool, but you know, if you're just on there just to scroll down, just wasting time, I'm, I got other things to do. I got content to make. You know, now I know if, if I'm on Instagram sometimes, I can actually find content to react to. So, you know, it's like a double-edged sword, I guess. Peace and blessings, Mark. I was trying to leave the kingdom of darkness but the agents keep on dragging me back in well the bible says submit yourself to god resist the devil and he will flee from you so if you're submitted to god and you're resisting the devil eventually those agents those demons they have to leave you alone so if you keep finding yourself they keep on trying to drag you back in it's probably because you're still opening the door for them to come back in because i could attest that through my testimony when they when the agents were trying to bring me go back into as well it's because i wasn't fully surrendered to him and God convicted me of that too. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me that. And the minute I started to take heed to the message, the warning, you know, and take action to do what I have to do to get these devils and demons and agents away from me, they left me alone. It's funny too, right? <laughs> About these agents, man. When someone in your life is sent by the devil, uh, remember, they're, they're sent, they're, they're, when people come in your way, guys, especially when it comes to relationships, somebody had to send them, bro. Because the Bible says that a, a, a prudent wife is from the Lord, right? So that means that God can send, send you a wife, okay? But that means the devil can also send you a counterfeit too. Yes, yes. So when the devil sends an agent your way, remember the Bible says a prudent wife is from the Lord. So a woman who's wise, a woman who's not, because the Bible says a foolish woman tears it down her house, but the wise builds it up, okay? Um, there's many, many other things that talks about the wise woman, you know, the, the virtuous woman, stuff like that. But the opposite of that, what's, what's the opposite of, of a wise woman? A foolish woman. So the foolish woman, she's going to tear it down. So you, when, you're, when you're with the agent, a woman who is sent from the devil, okay, or a man, a woman sent from the devil, okay, they're going to do the opposite of what's godliness, what's right. But see, they, they don't do this in the beginning stages. Like when you first meet them, it's actually the opposite. They show you so much love. They, they buy you things. They, they lure you in. They, they, they feed your ego, you know. Oh, you're so handsome. You're so cute. Blah, 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 blah. And they're feeding your ego. You know, they're operating in, in femininity. And you're just like, wow, you're, you're sent from God. No, you're sent from the devil, man. Now use your discernment. Now use your discernment, right? But I'm just telling you guys my testimonies about these agents. You know, they gaslight, they feed your ego. They, they, come, they come disguised as a virtuous woman, as a godly woman, but they're not, okay? And in the beginning stages, they buy you things. They, they do, you know, you know try to win, win you over. But y'all don't understand, man. These people are working for the devil. And the devil knows that, you know, well, certain people, not everybody, you know, some of you guys have wisdom, but that's why the Bible says a gift destroys the heart. One thing I noticed about these agents, they give you a whole bunch of gifts to, to, to you know, distract you. Some will leave that Bible verse too. It says that a gift destroys the heart, you know, or don't trust in a gift or, or something like that. I think it's in Proverbs. Proverbs are ecclesiastics. And, um, you know, when, once, they, once you give them your heart, once Satan sees that, then, you know, here comes, here comes the agenda. Now here comes them, to, you know, here, here you see those horns. You see those devil horns. Man, I have so many testimonies on this, man. The woman who was sent from the devil, you know, who came disguised as a Christian woman or a godly woman or an Israeli woman, just fake, phonies. And um, use your discernment, guys. Now, nowadays, that, that would never work. You know, I could, you know, my discernment is on sharp. Back then, I was, you know, still like a baby Christian, you know, still young and stuff like that, still like, you know, new to my walk, so they could easily deceive me. Now I know more. You ain't coming in my, my life. I could see, I could, people, and one thing about me too, I have love. So when I see someone, when I see someone battling or someone with spirits, I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm not going to be all religious and stuff like that. But I'm going to keep you, I'm going to love you from a distance though. And that's what we, we have to start doing, man. We can love these people, but from a distance. Because if you bring certain people in your life, you're going to find, you're going to find yourself down, man. You're going to find yourself at the bottom in a pit. Okay. That, oh, there's that, there's that Bible verse. Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse seven says, surely oppression make a wise man mad. And a gift destroys the heart. Yep, there you go. A gift destroys the heart. There you go. And see, Satan knows the Bible too. Satan knows the Bible more than me, more than all you guys. He's been on this earth for longer than all of us. Okay, the Bible says Satan walks uh, around the earth up and down. That's, that's in the book of Job. 
Okay, so he knows the Bible more than us, but see, he uses the Bible to manipulate. He uses the Bible to do the opposite, to destroy the world, to make, to defile the world. And we're living in a world that's, that's, uh, this world, God has to destroy this world because this earth is defiled, man. It's just like, think about like a house. If a house is built in the 1700s, you got to remodel it because it's old. That's why God's giving us a new earth or like a car. Okay. Now I know some cars, they, they, they age with time and, you know, not all cars, of course, but you know, eventually the car is going to break down. Okay. Eventually you have to get a new car. It's the same thing with this earth. It's old, bro. This earth is old. Okay. Even, even the Bible says that God's going to create a new heaven. All this is old. I got to, you know, remodel it just like a house. And I gained that wisdom too. Cause I have a friend, he bought a house and he's remodeling it. And you know, I was like, wow, it's the same thing with this earth. Cause this earth has to be a remodel, man. This earth is defiled, man. Full of wickedness, full of evil, perversion and sin. Okay. Even the Bible says to guard your heart, guys. So when people are coming your way, you know, don't be so quick to, and a lot of, I know a lot of you, do, and it's okay because you're empath. You know, that's, that's a, that's a tray of a chosen one. You're, you're empathetic. You have a, you have an empathetic soul, empathetic heart. And you know, you, you want to give people the benefit of the doubt. You want to love people and that's okay. You know, because God is love. So we, we were just, we're a child of God. So we have the same thing that God has. We have the same traits as God has. Just like the uh, Saiyan's children, they have the same traits as Satan has. Okay. But even in the midst of that, you can't, you got to, you know, guard your heart. Because if you're so quick to give it to someone, man, they could hurt you, man. They could betray you. And, you know, when you get betrayed by someone who you trust, someone who you wanted to see win, someone who you wanted to help, someone who you wanted to level up with, someone who you had love for. And you get betrayed by that person, man. It takes years to recover from that, man. It takes it takes a long time to recover. I, I, at least for my for me, you know that stuff hurts, bro. And it's just like, damn, I wanted to see you win, but it reminds me of a Abel and Cain. I know if you guys know that story of Abel and Cain, his own brother. You got to think about. It. He picked up a rock. I think he, he killed him with a rock, right, or a stone or something like that. And he like, come on, how do you do that to your own brother, man? These people are evil, bro. These people are evil, man. And that just pisses me off that we live in a world full of those type of people. Someone says, I miss having a girl. Uh, yeah, the Bible says it's not good for a man to be alone. So I, I could see, I could see uh, how you feel that way, man. Someone said Cain killed his own brother. Yup, he did, man. Just jealousy, envy. And a lot of people, they operate under that. And you would think that, right? You would think that when you start to elevate in life, when you start to level up and grow and reach new heights, reach new levels, you would think that people would be happy for you. But no, some people, they, they want, they, everything that you work for, you, the blood, sweat, and tears, everything that you work for, people feel obligated that you have to give it to them. They feel like you, like you owe them. Nah, you go do the work, bro. You, you, you go put it in it. You go put in the work. You know, they want to just chase women. They, people just want to just do drugs and get drunk and live that type of lifestyle. You know, while you're, you're denying yourself and putting in the work, people feel obligated that you just got to give it to them. Nah, hell nah. Forget that, man. So, you know, like I said, guys, a lot of people are just jealous and envious and you got to just walk your own way, walk your own path. And, uh, you, know, you know, now if God brings people your way, God, if God brings people your way, then that's a blessing. OK, you know, I'm not I'm not telling you guys are going to, you know, be completely alone. So like that, you know, because like I said, there is Bible verses that say that a friend, a friend is um, six close to their brother. It even says that who could find a, a faithful friend or, or something like that. Who could find like a faithful friend? Um, so even Solomon said. Out of a thousand people, out of a thousand men, out of a thousand men, he only found one. He only found one who was righteous. Okay, and out of a thousand women, there wasn't one. That speaks volume. And back then, that you know, back in those, back in the days of Israel, it was more like righteous. You know, you know, I, I wasn't alive back then, obviously, but I could assume because we're living in Sodom and Gomorrah over here. It's completely demonic over here. But at least back, you know, back then it was more righteous. He only found one man out of a thousand. That was righteous. And he didn't find any righteous woman out of a thousand. Wow, that speaks volumes, bro. What makes you think it's going to be worse today, right? You would think that. It has to be worse today. Thank you so much, Rollo. Appreciate you, man. He says, what's happening, Mark? Grats on the level up. All praise to the most high. Folks, let's keep winning for the most high. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, man. Y'all make sure y'all check out Floridian Rollo Talk. Go subscribe to this channel. Go subscribe to that brother's channel, man. M1 Glitch says, how can I deal with family that wants to destroy me? Oh, you guys, not just to answer your question, because I've seen people leave that, that comment too. You get, you get far away from them. You get, get far away from these people who are trying to destroy you, who are trying to gaslight, who are trying to manipulate, who are trying to play a game. People who, people who take you for granted, get far away from them. Okay, get far away from them. That's what I would recommend you do. 
That's what I would recommend you do. Someone said happy love day. Happy love day. <laughs> Wait, let me see that again. Let me see that again. She said happy day. Oh, okay. I read that wrong. My fault. My fault. My fault. Uh, thank you so much, Leo, for the super chat. It says peace and blessings, Mark. Always wondered why Proverbs refer to wisdom as sir. Yeah, um, yeah, wisdom, wisdom is, is feminine. Wisdom is, um, is, uh, is feminine. So it doesn't mean that if you, you have wisdom, you're going to be feminine or anything like that. But yes, wisdom, wisdom is a her. Now, people want to say, like, God is a woman or something like that. That's total blasphemy. That's total blasphemy. God is a man. Okay, he's a man of war. You are not alone. God's always with you. Yes, guys, let me make this very clear, too. Yes, I understand that God is with you. Angels, even the Bible says, when you fear God, you have um, angels around you. So you're never really alone spiritually. But in the physical realm, you are alone. That's just the truth, okay? Um, that's, that's, now, I'm not going to say, like I said, let me make this very clear. I'm not going to say you're always going to be alone. But for the most part, on the beginning stages, and there's a reason behind this too, okay? You, this is a, is a reason behind this. Because like I said, for me, for, for my testimony, I was more weaker. I was more prone to fall into the deception. So God had to isolate me so I could go away from all that. So I could know, know the truth. Then he put me back in because now I know. Now I'm disciplined. Now I'm accountable. Now I can hold myself accountable. Uh, thank you so much, Edward uh, Monroe for the Super Chat says, everyone should keep fighting to repent because once you see what's really behind it face to face, just don't do it. It is real life. Yeah. Yeah. We got to live for life for six repentance for sure, man. Uh, thank you so much, Anti-Blasphemy <laughs> Anti Studios. That's an interesting name. It says, Adam and Eve were supposed to be rulers of earth, but they unintentionally gave rulership to Satan. God will make it right soon, though. Yeah, that's true. Yep. That's true. You got to think about it, man. And I always, I always think about this. Adam and Eve, they had everything, everything the world had to offer. And it wasn't like they were in competition because they were the only ones on earth. It was just Adam and Eve, okay? But Eve, she, she wanted more. She wanted more, man, even though they already had everything. So it's just, just crazy, man. We're living in uh, some weird times. Forsake the foolish and live. Go in the way of understanding. Yes, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 6. Yes, yes, yes. There you go. Forsake the foolish and live. There you go. That was a Bible verse I was talking about. So, yes, anybody like that, just get away from them. Uh, someone says, is there any hope? <laughs> she says, is there any hope for single moms? Of course there's hope. There's hope for everyone. If you're still breathing, there's hope. There's always hope for someone that's breathing. Okay. Uh, someone says, the answers to the questions you're having to seek God's kingdom. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Someone says woman coffee emoji. What does that mean, man? We're living in the last days? Yeah. Um, uh, someone says OBS. Wait, OBS man. Oh, super chat. Okay. OBS man says, appreciate you, brother. I have tested your spirit and found nothing but confirmation. You are very relatable, and the Jesus in you helped me wake up to the daily war around us. That's what's up, man. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, man. No, yeah, we should, we should be testing people's spirits. Oh, everybody, you should always, um, not just on YouTube, but in life, people who come your way, you should always test someone's spirit to see if they're of God. So, yeah, definitely we should start doing that. Someone said, bro, please tell me how you are meditating over God's word. I just made a video on that a couple days ago. It's a 20-minute long video. So, uh, yeah, go check that out. It's talk, it's type in uh, meditate God's word, mark the messenger to pop up on YouTube. So, yeah, you definitely. That's another way you can keep on uh, growing, too. But definitely you want to just keep on growing, meditating on the Word of God. And, uh, yeah, so you are a straight vibe. Thank you. Thank you so much. How do I test the spirits, Mark? Well, the Bible says that uh, the gift of discernment, to discern someone's spirit. So the only way you could test someone's spirit is having the Holy Spirit. That's the only way. So uh, make sure you have the Holy Spirit. And I, I, I made a, I'm going to make a community post. I'm going to ask people, how many people have been baptized? I want to ask, I want to see what the answer is for that. How many people have been baptized before? And um, I feel like we got to start doing that, man. People started, got, started getting baptized, man. People definitely started getting more baptized. Someone says, need more Fox 600 videos. Yeah, I can make, I was actually going to make, I was actually going to make a video on that today, but I was like, I'm going to the city to, uh, this weekend. So, um, but yeah, I could definitely, um, yeah, shout out to Fox 600. He's a great content creator. Make sure you guys check him out too as well. Um, yeah, I, I, can, I can react to his videos too. I think he just made a video today too. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm going to definitely check that out. Uh, what, I, what I'm going to start doing, I'm going to start going out to the city. I'm going to start coming out here maybe like every other weekend and making videos for you guys, man. Uh, Rocky says, I was never baptized. You got to change that, Rocky. Definitely got to change that, man. 
definitely got to change that. I was just thinking about being baptized, but I'm not sure where. I want to do it at any church, but I don't feel the spirit in there. Um, what you could always do, guys, is pray and ask God to lead you. Because if you're praying that's something that's linked to God's will, he will always, he'll always make a way. God will always make a way when it's linked to his will. So uh, if you don't know, like if you don't have like a church to go to or you don't know anybody to do it, just pray. And I'm telling you guys, God, God will give you instructions and he will lead you to find people to do it. Or people will just pop up. People will pop up, call you, hit you up and ask you like, hey, like, you know, we're doing a baptism. This is what happened to me. This is what happened to me, bro. I wasn't even going to the church. They somehow got my number. I think how they got my number because when you walk in, they ask for like a paper. And he texted me. The pastor of that church texted me. He was like, hey, we're having baptism service if you want to get baptized. Like randomly. Like I haven't been to that church in years. And I was going through so much at the time too, man. God was, he was there, man. Even though I was, even though I was going through the curses and I was being disobedient, God was still there, man. That's why, you know, someone says, is there hope for single moms? There's hope for all of us that we have, if we're breathing. Okay, there's hope for all of us, okay? Um, and, you know, I got baptized that, that night. And, um, man, it was, uh, it was definitely a blessing, a blessing. I'll never forget that day, man. I'll never forget that day. That was the day my life changed. So, yeah, God is great for that, man. Uh, always, always hope, always speak it into existence. Yeah, you could do that, but I would, I would make sure you're praying about that, man. You could speak to the existence, too. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. So, you know, I'm not saying that you can't do that. Uh, my uncle owns a church, thank God. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. People have been telling me to open a church. People got to understand this, guys. The church is not just a building. This right here is church, okay? This right here, we have 400 people in the, in the building. This video is going to reach 1,000 people, maybe millions, okay? This, this, is, this is the church. So a lot of people got to stop, stop being so programmed to think that church is just a building you go on Sundays. Church is our bodies. The Bible says that God doesn't dwell with temples made with hands, Okay, so our bodies are the church. A lot of people don't, they can't comprehend that. It's because they're carnal, they're the carnal mind. Okay, so um, yeah, man, this is church. You guys don't even understand, this is church. I don't have to start a building and be a 501c3 uh, tax, tax write-off or whatever, and you know, and fleece the flock. This is church right here. Okay, so someone said this is church without walls. Exactly. Okay, you know when you're, when, you know when you're going out, and, and you have a couple dollars in your wallet and you want to go help someone out in need, that's, you're the church. That's church. So we got to stop being so programmed to think that church is just a building on Sundays or Wednesdays. Okay, church is every single day. Okay, people tell me, oh, Mark, you're, because you're forsaking the assembly. There's 400 people. I'm fellowshipping with 400 people right now. Now, now it's 400 people talking. Some people watching in the clouds. Maybe some people are driving, watching. You know, so I know everyone can't comment and stuff like that, but... You know, this is church, guys. So we got to stop being so indoctrinated to think that. Remember, the Bible says that God does not dwell with temples made with hands, as says the prophet, the book of Acts. Okay. Um, is your church going to bring that out, bring that Bible verse out? Of course they're not. The, the actual, you know, building, they're, they're not going to bring out that. They're not going to bring out that verse. But I will. You know, I will. So, yeah, man. Someone says Jesus is the only way. Yep, that's true. This is church. Yep, Absolutely. Peace and blessings to you too, uh, Universal Flies. Uh, do you think that baptism should be required as an infant? Uh, I mean, why would, why would a baby need to get baptized? You know, because they're without sin. You know, baptism should be, um, I, say, I say eight, nine years old. You know, somewhere around that. that's a good age. Um, eight, nine. But I mean, uh, one year, like my, my daughter, 10 months old, why would she need to get baptized? She's, uh, come on, she doesn't even know how to walk or talk. But no, I definitely want to, I'm going to baptize her when she gets older, though, for sure. Definitely. Exactly. Our bodies are where he dwells. Exactly. Exactly, man. But yeah, my butt hurts. Guys, I've been sitting down in this wooden, uh, let me show you guys. I've been sitting down right here. This wooden little thing. It hurts. But man, it's reminiscing coming up here, man. Used to make videos all the time. People were like, people were in the comments were like, Mark, is this an old video? Because the old video that it was in this. No, this is new. This is live, guys. This is live. But anyways, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys who liked the video, everyone who left super chats, everyone who commented. I know the comments, there's a lot of comments, so I can't really, I couldn't really read it. I try to make sure I, towards the end of the video, I read the comments. Let me read that Bible verse. He's listed left. He says, commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will be a step or succeed. Uh, Proverbs chapter 16 verse 3 yeah that's, that's a good one that's a good one man thank you Mark for this church no problem bro no problem man but yeah y'all take it easy y'all stay blessed 
I love you guys so much, man. The support, y'all keep me going. I'm going to try to come up here, guys, more often and uh, build you guys on more topics. So love you guys so much. You're blessed, too. Thank you, Desiree. Thank you, Ray. God bless you all. I'm out. Peace.